Baby, you don't know what you do to me Between me and you, I feel like chemistry I won't let no one Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley. If you do not know already, I am a zero based budgeter who is trying to get her shit together. So if you guys are not following me right now, go ahead and do so. Hit that little subscribe button right here. Well, more like right here. <laughs> hit that button it is free we have a good time over here and i know you guys will too so in this video we are going to be making our hundred envelope challenge box and i'm so excited because i have not started that challenge yet but once my envelopes are we will be stuffing this going forward now i already started some envelopes i decided to do a 52 week challenge box as well I started on those, they're pretty much eh, somewhat finished. I still need to finish laminating the rest of them, but I will show you guys what those look like. So here is a few that I have already laminated and put together. Let me show you one a little bit more up close. So it does have the little pocket here and it is double-sided. Now you can make these a little different. You can do a clear back and that is done with an additional laminating sheet, the same size as this. And these are three by six, the paper ones. The clear ones, that's three and three. Or yeah, with the clear back, it is three on the top, three by three on the top and three by three on the bottom. But to make these, it is three by six. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do that. So I'll also leave on the, on the screen here, probably put it right here, um, all the things that you'll need, but you're going to need some cardstock. Now the cardstock here, this paper, actually have two, we're gonna do two together. It's super cute, right? Ah, love it. So the cardstock that I'm using is 12 by 12. You can actually get this cardstock from Hobby Lobby, um, Michaels, don't know about Walmart. I've even heard people say Google, you can get them off there. Um, I like to get them from Hobby Lobby. They have a great and wide range of colors and textures and prints. So um, I got mine from Hobby Lobby and I love that because the brand that I use is actually called the Paper Studio. They're $1.99 and they're always on sale. They're always like 50% off all the time. So every time they are 50% off, I go and get them. And so what you need is, so back to what I was saying. So what you'll need is of course the cardstock. You can also just use regular, regular eight and a half by 11 paper to do this. But I just find that this is a lot easier because I can get, with one sheet, I can get eight envelopes out of this one sheet. And so in total, you'll need a total of 13 12 by 12s to make 100 envelopes. If that makes sense. What we're gonna do is start with this. You are going to need cardstock. You're also going to need a cutter. This is the cutter that I have. This one is by Cricut. You can also purchase any other type of cutter that works for you. They have the big ones, they have the smaller ones, they have ones that are a little smaller, but I definitely prefer the ones that are at least 31 inches um, here, because depending on the size of the paper that you have, you can cut a good amount and a, and a good range of different sizes and things or whatever you're doing. So I also like this one because it has this additional ruler on the side that kind of kicks out like so. So now you're getting one through at least 15 inches. So that's really cool. Um, but of course you can use any other type of ruler that or cutter that you need. You can also just use plain old scissors and a regular smuggler ruler to do this. Um, it, like I said in the beginning, it is very, very simple. So you're also going to need laminating sheets. This is just, sorry about the glare, I do apologize. Um, this is a laminating sheet and this is from Scotch. I also use the laminator as well, but I did get mine. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's it. I did get my laminating sheet, the 200 off of Amazon. Um, you can definitely get these from Walmart, Office Max, Staple, Target, 
I think even Hobby Lobby and Michael sells it. <laughs> but I did get this off of Amazon because I got 200 pouches and I believe it was, I think this was $15. Yes, it was $15 for this whole little bundle. I'm sorry, this whole pouch. And I got the 3M. I do need to get some 5ML because I do have some thicker cardstock and I think it would work better with the 5M. But once I get that, I'll test it out and let y'all know. I'll update it and leave it in a comment or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over here. So you're going to need the laminating pouches and then you're also going to need a laminator. Um, I will show you my laminator once that time comes to laminate. Um, it's just on the other side of the table and I, I just don't want to get up. But that laminator is also by Scotch as well and it does have the 3M and the 5M um, setting on there as well. So I am going to zoom you guys in and we're going to get started on making these envelopes. Now I did pre-cut some prior to this video and they will actually be like this <laughs> before cutting them. And oh, let me get you guys in the frame here. So they'll be like this. Um, each one of these, you will be able to fold in half like so and make your little three by three envelope. So these I'm gonna also be adding to my mix of laminating as well. Um, and this is one that I um, completed. Now I did forget to mention in the, the things that you'll need for this video, you can also use a glue stick. <laughs> now with the glue stick, I like this one, um, the washable glue stick ones, they dry clear, can't even, you don't even know that they're there, that the glue is there. Um, Cause sometimes with cardstock, it tends to open. And once we start folding, I'll show you guys exactly how that is. Um, but I use a little bit of glue stick on the sides here. You don't need a whole lot. You just wanna be enough to keep it closed. That is gonna be so beneficial when it comes down to laminating because you don't want to create air pockets or large air pockets around your envelopes. So this will help keep a lot of, keep the air sealed on the side or keep the envelope sealed on the sides so that way you don't get that air pocket here. Alrighty, so we are going to start with, let's do the pink one. Move this out of the way here. All right, so let me move this over here. Okay. So now what we want to do is we're going to follow this, the ruler on this side here. So you see the one, the two, and the three. We want to make sure that we get our paper to the three and you want to make sure as you go up to the top of here that it matches up to the three up here. Good thing is this has the lines to follow along so that way your paper can always be straight. So now what we're going to want to do is slide this. Let me move this up here a little bit so you guys are in frame. We're going to want to slide our paper through the side here. And then we're going to bring that all the way over to the three mark. Now you want to make sure that it's lined up all the way to the top, touching the other three there. Make sure it's fully lined. And then we're going to close our blade here and we want to press firmly down on our paper so that it does not move. Let me make sure I'm fully lined the way I want to be. And then I always like to make sure that my paper is pressed up against the edge here because it just helps with keeping that paper more aligned. Okay, so now I'm gonna press firmly on this side with my left hand and press firmly down on the blade and follow through. Now we have our first little three by six, well, not really three by six, three by 12 piece that we are gonna need. We are gonna cut this piece again um, to three by six. So um, let me go ahead and finish cutting the rest of these and then we'll move on to the next part of cutting. So now we have all of our three, I should say actually three by 12s. <laughs> so now we're gonna cut these into three by sixes. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually use that extended ruler here. 
like so. It might be a little upside down for you, so I do apologize. Let me get y'all back in the frame here. Okay, so then you're going to want to take your three by 12s and we're going to slide that through the, the end here. And now you're going to want to take the three by 12 and slide it all the way up to the six inch mark. Going to make sure that your paper is pressed firmly up against the edge here. Hold your paper flat. Apply pressure to the blade and cut. Now we have two three by six pieces. So I'm gonna do that one more time. So now I'm gonna feed that through, bring it all the way to the six inch mark. Oops. I'm a little anal with this, so. <laughs> There we go. And we're gonna move our blade back. Press firmly. Make sure it's above the, uh, the edge and follow through with the blade. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and finish the last two. Alrighty, so now that made one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven, and eight. So now we have eight envelopes here. And then I also, my pre-cut right here was eight as well. So I do have that other sheet, that other cheetah gold foil sheet. And I'm gonna go ahead and speed through this video and, um, you guys can just kind of watch me do it. Alrighty, so now that we have all of our pieces cut, now we want to go ahead and fold them to our three by threes. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. Now there's, of course, just, you know, typically you can fold, but the goal is you wanna make sure that the end here, um, the actual fold is pinched in tight. There's no lift to your, um, your little envelope here. So what I like to do is use the edge here, or you can use the edge of anything else that you can find. So what I'm gonna do is take the, put one edge to the end here of my cardstock, and then I'm going to go ahead and fold the top over, make sure both of them are on there, and I'm gonna press down. Now that I have it folded, what I'm gonna do, um, I don't know where I did with my little edge thing. So I'm gonna grab this here. I'm gonna just use this. <laughs> and so what I wanna do is make sure that it is fully, fully creased. I err, fully, fully, oh, that was extra of me. Now, see that there is a little lift here on the edge. I don't know if you guys can kind of see that. It's a little open space. So what I like to do is take my handy dandy glue stick. I'm gonna open up my sides here. Now do not worry, it's not going to keep it, like you're not gonna do all in the middle. That's not what you wanna do. You want to just put a little glue stick, a little glue stick, a little bit of glue along the edge here so that you don't have a lot of bubbles. And you just need a little bit. You don't need a whole lot. 
use the edge of this there. And then I put a little bit on this side and a little bit on this side. Okay. And we just hold and seal together. I prefer to use the glue stick more than just like your liquid glue or like a hot glue gun because it can get a lot messier and we don't want that. <laughs> so there, and now I'll just go ahead and stick it under something that's heavy. So like this, just that way it stays closed. And then we do the next one. So I'm gonna speed through these um, and then I'll come back with the next part. So now that I have all of my three by six folded into a three by three, like so, there's all the ones that we have that we're gonna laminate. So now I'm going to, it already turned on my laminator. This is the laminator that I use. This one is of course by Scotch. This one actually has the little platform to help load your um, sheet in and you can do three ML or five ML. So what we're gonna do is set those there for right now. So here is our little laminating sheet. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Make sure when you um, take your card, you want to make sure that you take your opening and you're going to want to place that in the seam of your, um, in the seam of your laminating sh um, sheet. Okay. Now you want to make sure that you have room on the sides and on the inside and a little bit on the bottom because you're getting place up to six in one sheet. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you how I'm gonna place these. Okay, so now they're all in the sheet here. I'm gonna go ahead and close this up like so. And what I like to do is take a flat surface. Um, let me grab one, I'll be right back. Okay, so I have this empty laminating um, pouch here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them all on here and then we're gonna feed it into the machine. It's okay if they kind of slide up and move it around because you can always adjust it a little bit. So this is what it looks like. Sorry about the glare there. Okay. And then what you want to do is make sure you try to wipe your hand across here to try to get as much air out as you can. And then we're going to start feeding it into the machine. So I'm going to slowly push it in here like so. 
Try not to get my pouches to move too much. And there we go. It does take some time. It is a little slow. I wish that there was definitely an easier or a faster way to do this, but I haven't found an alternative just as of yet. I think if I do end up starting to sell these like on Etsy or something, then I will invest in uh, maybe like an industrial one, but that, I don't know, this is a lot. <laughs> Now it does come out a little warm. Yeah. And that is our laminating sheet. Now you can tell that there is a small little bubble that goes around. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me see if I can angle it right. Okay, there. So you can see here that there is like a small little air pocket and that's normal, that's totally okay but you don't want it to be like way out here with that air pocket because then it's not gonna seal and you're gonna have to reseal it. But what I like to do is take it, flip it around to the opposite way. And run it through one more time. Just to be sure, you just never know. <laughs> definitely does take some time. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and speed through the next process. And you guys can just watch me put them in and get these all laminated.
Um, now I always know what is uh, where my seams are because it's always the um, member in the sheet that always face the crease of the pocket. So it's usually always on the shorter end. And then the bottom is usually has more left, more room on the bottom. So that's how I always know what my opening slots are. You can always mark the sheet as well. If you feel like you can't remember, you can always mark it like in a corner somewhere or whatever you feel is gonna be best for you to remember where your openings are. So, so I have 24 here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these out. And so what I like to do is use the, I like to use the cutter, is feed it through here, cut down the middle first. I'm gonna press firmly and come through. See? So then I'm gonna do that for all of the other ones. And what I, I'll do next, I'll speed through this, and then I'll show you guys how I cut along the borders as well. Okay, I'll cut these a little later. So now that these are all cut, individually cut, I always take a look at them, look very closely. I wanna make sure I see the air pocket seam. Uh, let me see if you guys can see that. I don't think you can, sorry about the glare guys. No, okay, so you see that little air pocket that goes along right here. You don't wanna cut that. You want to make sure you cut above that. So for this, um, actually it's on this side. The, the part that we don't want to cut is on the bottom and on the sides. But on the top, you want to cut that airstrip so that way you can get the money in the little pocket there. So when, um, on the top, we want to cut that air pocket on the sides and on the bottom, we do not. So I'm going to show you guys. Now, some people will use scissors. I don't, I don't like to use the scissors. I just use, like, like to use my cutter, but use whatever you can is best for you. So what I like to do is I match, let me see if I can zoom you guys in here. Okay. So along this little cut, this little seam here, I line up the air pocket along, sorry about the glare guys. Let me move you down a little bit, okay. So I line that air pocket up right along the seam of the, where the cut is gonna be. And that way I will cut right there. So I'm gonna hold down firmly so it doesn't move. And we're gonna cut through. Now sometimes you have to do it multiple times and that's totally okay. Ah, I think I didn't cut, oops. I think I didn't cut enough, so we're gonna do it again. We're gonna make sure it's very well sized up along that line. Now you don't wanna cut your envelope, but you definitely wanna make sure that you are cutting that seam. We're gonna hold very tightly. I believe we got it this time, <laughs> we did. So now we can just open it up and there's our little pocket. Yay. So now we're gonna do that for all of them. But before we move on to the next one, let's cut down all the sides. So now on the sides and on the bottom, remember as I said, we're gonna watch that seam. But I'm gonna cut above the seam here. And that looks about right. So I'm gonna press firmly here so it doesn't move. I'm gonna move the cutter up above and we're gonna cut. Perfect, now the seam didn't break open, we are all good. So now let's do that on the bottom. Same thing, watch for that seam, make sure we're not cutting open that little air pocket. Press firmly. And we did the same thing, so we're good. Now let's do the other side. 
And you wanna do the same thing. Watch for that air pocket. You wanna cut above that little air pocket seam there. Oops. There we go. And I slid it again. What is wrong with me? Ah, the glare is getting to me. There we go, okay. This is perfect right there. Cut, and there we have it. Now, you, there's gonna be um, definitely a little border, and that's totally normal. And this is our front and back. And once again, our little pocket. And we can put some money in there. Hey, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of them, and then I will be right back. Alrighty guys, so here are some of the envelopes that I've already cut out. They all are able to open up just nicely. Oh, so as I get my finger in this one, there we go. Oh, it's perfect. You can slide that money in there just like easy as one, two, three, so cool. And then this one does it as well. There we go. Sometimes you get a little Bend them a little bit to get your fingers in. But simple and easy. I also still have all of these to do. <laughs> I have more of, um, I still need to fold and get these all laminated, which I will do off camera. But this video was definitely in reference to just kind of show you guys how I do it. It's so simple, very easy. It is a little time consuming, especially um, when this is your, like, especially if this is your first time doing this. So it will take you a few goes at it, but um, once you get it, get the hang of it, 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 it does go pretty quick. I actually did a, pair, uh, a set for my mom. Hers is all done. So um, I can actually show you guys. Let me, let me give hers here. Okay, so these are my mom's. Oh, <laughs> So these are my mom's. She actually just used a Sharpie to label uh, what numbers she has left and remaining. So these are the ones that she did. And as you can tell, um, she cut out hers, but she left more space and more room um, on some of hers as well. But it is the same size card. She just left more of the plastic or more or less, she just left more of the laminate um, out on the border, but they both are the same size. And then I can show you reference to what it looks like with money in it. So this is one of hers that we made. And I believe she has a $20 bill. This is a full $20 bill. And then you can, of course, just stuff it like this. Or you can also roll it for more privacy if you like. Um, or roll it and fold it again and for more privacy you can put it in here like so. So you have those options. Let me just put this back the way I had it. Now um, I do want to show you guys the different sizes of boxes 
because I feel like my mom and I have been able to find different work sizes. So I believe both of these are from Walmart. I'll give you one second here. So I believe both of these, yes, they both are from Walmart. The, they both are the pen gear, if you don't know. This is the one that I have mine. My mom has a, a much larger one. You can definitely get a lot more in here. Um, but I do like the more confined one. I believe this is like three by five. I can't remember what this one was, but I'll put it on the screen for you guys. Um, but I've noticed that you can find them from Walmart. Um, you can get them even at Dollar Tree, same um, same style, same like little doodads on the side and everything. Definitely won't have this label, it's definitely not gonna have that. Um, but you can definitely find, I believe, this size and this size at Dollar Tree. Um, and I believe you can find these on Amazon. Sorry guys, I remembered I just took off my mic. Oh. I will link all of the things um, down below for you guys. Alrighty friends, so these are the ones that we laminated and cut together. This is what they all look like. So pretty. I can't wait to finish the rest. I do have a good amount to go. It is a little time consuming, so be patient. It may take you a few days until you can get, you know, your full <laughs> flow of how to create these. I do have a lot here, <laughs> but this is all going to be my hundred envelopes. So I'm super, super excited about these. I cannot wait to finish them up, but the ones that we cut are all finished. They look amazing. I am so excited and I cannot wait to start um, stuffing these. Oh, these are sideways. I cannot wait to start stuffing these and sh sharing these in my videos coming forward. So um i'm hoping that by next video it will be done and that way i can start budgeting and putting these all together so i do have so this in box here um this box here is going to be 52 week challenge <laughs> i do have these here this is all 52 i believe um, I do have some glitter ones. Now, the glitter ones here I got from Hobby Lobby as well. They have them in a variety of colors. Rainbow colors and then some. You can get all of these. These are more of like gold and champagne and rose gold. Um, but I do need to get 5M because I noticed that with, because this is a lot thicker cardstock, um, it doesn't seal as well around the edges with the 3M and you definitely need the 5M, which is a lot thicker to accommodate for um, thicker cardstock. So if you guys ever do get glitter paper from Hobby Lobby or you can even get it from Michaels, definitely get 5M, um, M, ML, you know what I mean, <laughs> get 5ML um, thermal paper so that way they can work. So I'm going to definitely go get some of that when I go to um, Hobby Lobby tomorrow and and then you'll see these in an upcoming video as well so that is it guys I did went ahead and I did want to let you guys know also that I am thinking about selling these on my Etsy which is going to be launching around the first of March so definitely stay tuned for that um, there's going to be a good amount of stuff on there. There's going to be trackers. There's going to be envelopes. There's going to be um, some downloadables, some things I can mail to you. I also have a P.O. box, which I'm so excited about that. Well, I've had a P.O. box for a little while, but I'm actually going to be able to use my P.O. box. So <laughs> that's the exciting part for that. Oh, I forgot these over here. Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys really do enjoy this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, join my little fam bam. I would love to have y'all. And thank you so much to all my new subscribers who have joined. Hello, welcome, girl. Hey, girl, hey. And I will catch y'all in my next video. Bye.